Harbour Homewares shop project. Now in today's episode I want to complete the exterior of the shop and finally make a start on the interior. So let's get started. So the first little job I did today was to replace the lantern that I broke a few weeks ago. I was really annoyed with myself if you remember because I twisted the lantern when I was trying to put it back in place rather than twisting the disc at the back. So I bought a new lantern and I thought I could just replace the front bit but because the the threads of the screw part weren't in the same place I could only tighten it up if the lantern was sort of laid on its side so I did actually have to replace the whole thing so I just used a sharp knife to remove the sticker at the back just being really careful not to take any of the brick paper off outside of the circle because obviously it took the bit off behind and then I've just stuck that over the top and I'll just be super careful in future but hopefully that battery won't need replacing for quite a while anyway. So that's that done and I'm really pleased that's done because every time I looked at it it was really annoying me that I'd been so careless with it. I've also given the sign board a coat of clear varnish and that looks really nice. One thing I did notice is the board's actually warped a little bit. I won't touch it because it's still wet, but it's just sort of um, warped at the corners. And I think that might be where I had it stored in the sunshine. But I'm sure once I come to actually fit that, that I'll be able to flatten that out. And I've had a look online for some small letter set lettering to go on here. Now I can find some gold but it's quite plain lettering and I want something that obviously matches the, um, the, the font of the shop name. So I'm actually going to ask Matt if he'll cut me some more lettering using this similar font and in about six millimeter quarter of an inch high letters. And I just, and on there, I just want um, furniture, kitchenwares, soft furnishings, and gifts. And I'm sure I'll just be able to give him the size of that internal part of the board, and he'll be able to cut some letters for that. So that will look quite nice, and that'll be quite fun to do. So I now want to make a start on those frames for the inside of the door and I'm going to do them around all of the windows and the doors as well. And for the windows I'm going to use a 6mm wide strip, that's a quarter of an inch, and for the doors I'll use 9mm. Actually now I've just said that, let, let me make sure I've got enough room in between the window and the door. Actually I've got 18 there. So I think they might be a little bit too close. So I'll stick with six millimetres for the windows and the doors. So that makes it nice and easy. And so I've propped the door up here on my desk. I don't want to lay it down again because I don't want to remove that lantern from the front and risk breaking that again. So I'm just going to be really careful. And I'm actually going to measure the strips for the surround against the windows. So I've cut myself some strips here from 1.5 millimetre sheet wood, 1 16th of an inch, and like I said earlier, they're six millimetres wide or one quarter of an inch. And I always cut the strips a lot longer than I know I'm going to need them. And then I started by cutting a mitre angle in the end of that strip. And then I line that up with the top of the window. So the sort of little corner bit there is in alignment with that horizontal top of the window. Get it into position like that and then I bring in my pencil and just make a little mark along the bottom of the window there so in line with that and then I know that's where I need to do my next mitre cut so I can then take that away and do the next cut and I'm using my handheld guillotine for that, my old one. So go along like that. And there's my first piece. And then I'll do the same at the other side of the window. Rather than just cutting another one the same size as this, always measure each side because chances are there will be a slight difference. I know in each of these windows there is from when I fitted that internal frame. That's a nice fit there. So I'll now do the other side. And then to get the measurement along the top, I'll measure 
along the top of the window there like that and that's 77 millimeters so I start by cutting the first mitre angle and then I'll measure from the straight edge below the angle along there and that's the 77 millimeters and then cut the other mitre angle like that and then I've just measured along the bottom as well and that one is 76 millimetres. So there's my first angle and I'll come along and measure 76 millimetres. Actually it was 76.5. So I'll line that up there where the angle starts. 76.5 and I always just do a little line like that so I know when I put it into the cutter which way I need to cut and snip that off like that always go by the little pencil mark you've made and not your line because that's just to sort of remind you which way around you need to cut so there's my first internal window frame now I'm going to paint them all as separate pieces so I'll stick them to my card using masking tape and paint them like that and I'll lay them on the card in order of the windows and doors actually on the shop front so I know which one goes back where and then I'll paint them and then glue them into place and we'll still then be able to fill any little gaps if we need to because as I've said to you before it's quite difficult getting mitre joints to be exact so you may have some little gaps still as carefully as you measure but we can fill those and paint over them if we need to. So I'll get on with cutting the rest of the window and door frames. OK, so the surrounds are all now cut and I've stuck them to cards. So that's the sort of top row of windows and those two large windows at the bottom there. And I've stuck them on there so I've got the left and right window as I'm looking at it and the sides, top and bottom and then I know where each piece goes back because they aren't all, obviously all the same size top and bottom in each side I've done the same on there and then I just wanted to show you a slightly different way that I've cut um, the surrounds for the doors so I've done the sides and the top as normal but I've obviously gone down to the bottom with the side panel there am I in shot there? I'm not sure and then because it would have just looked silly to have a thinner um, strip along the bottom there, I've done a thicker strip so that goes right down to the bottom of the actual door. And then again the other side I've taken right down to the bottom as well. And then the top I've cut as normal, so just the angled strip. But I thought that would look a little bit or make more sense than just having a, a strip of paint showing underneath the door surround. So I'll attach these to card as well and then I can get a coat of paint on all of the pieces. So that's the first coat there on the door surrounds and I'm sure I've told you this before but just in case when I use this sort of method of, of sticking them to the sheet with masking tape before I leave them to dry I always just go around like that and push each of the pieces off of the card like that just so that nothing's actually sticking to the card otherwise you'll find that when it dries and you come to remove it you'll have sort of fluffy bits of card stuck to your strip so just go around and work them all off of the card like that so that they're all sort of staying on the tape but sticking up like that okay so i'll get the other sheet in now so the intro that you saw earlier the introduction and the first sort of couple of bits couple of bits of this um video i actually filmed before christmas i wanted to make a start on the video and I had planned on getting a lot more done before Christmas but it, it didn't work out like that and my Etsy shop was actually a lot busier than I thought it would be um, at that time of year so it's now the 4th of January, Monday the 4th and I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward actually to getting back to this and in fact last night I was thinking about because you know I'm going to be doing the advertising signs, hand painting them on the side of the building, so on the, each side of the shop. 
and I woke up in the middle of the night and because I'd been thinking about it before I went to sleep the name of a chip shop just popped into my head so I'm going to have one of the advertising slogans saying the place by the sea and place spelt P-L-A-I-C-E as in the fish I thought that was quite nice and then on the other side we'll have the honey church haberdashery established and then I'll, I'll choose a date that has a meaning to me but yeah just really excited to be getting back on with this and it's so nice having time off and had um, Christmas Eve off and then obviously until today from until today and I've been I have done a few bits bits and pieces um, replying to messages and admin and all things like that did my accounts and and things like that but this is my first sort of day back in my craft room and actually doing something creative it feels feels good and Matt's actually um, back on furlough now so he hasn't gone back to work um, well, he doesn't work Mondays anyway but he would have gone back tomorrow so that won't be happening which is a bit of a worry but then I know it's worrying for everybody at the moment and when you're um, painting strip wood do make sure you get along the edges of the wood as well especially when you're using a dark colour as that's going to be really obvious that you've got bare wood along the edges Okay, so each of those pieces has now had a coat of paint and I think I'm probably going to have to do a second coat in the morning some of them look a little bit patchy in places so I'll see how they dry overnight and whilst I've been doing that Matt has very kindly cut me a sticker for our advertising board which will go on the front of the shop now I did say earlier about trying to find some letter set lettering but I could only find a very plain font and I wanted something to match the sign but Matt explained that when you're cutting letters so small and these are five millimetres high that's 13 64ths of an inch it's best not to use a fancy font because then it becomes very difficult to actually weed the letters out of the sheet of vinyl so we have had to just use um, Arial or Arial font which is a really basic font but I'm actually rather pleased with how that looks now again, when you're using the Craft Robo machine to cut the lettering, as we've done here, and you would have seen that machine in the episode where I cut the name of the shop, you have to put the blade on a firmer cut so that it actually digs deeper into the vinyl. So that, that's what he's done here. So he's peeled the first half off for me because he says it's going to be really difficult to peel off and keep the lettering on this front piece of application tape. So I'm just going to very, very carefully finish peeling that off and then apply it to the board. And the board here, I've actually just stuck onto my um, cutting mat with masking tape just to hold it still while I'm applying the lettering. And if you'll remember from the last episode, this is actually warped slightly, but I know that when I actually stick it into place on the front of the shop, I'll be able to push that, flatten that down until the glue begins to take. So that, that won't be too much of a problem. So let me just very carefully peel the rest of this back in off and I'll just change camera position. So as I peel that away, I need to make sure that the letters are actually stick into this piece of tape that I'm peeling up so I just need to carefully pull them from the actual backing sheet there and, and it also depends on the type of vinyl you're using some vinyls are going to be a little bit softer this was quite a thick one that I chose because I wanted a really good quality one 
and as I'm doing this I'm being really careful not to actually move the letters out of line and there's that bit just picking each of those up with the tip of the craft knife <laughs> see my camera light, battery light flashing out of the corner of my eye so if I suddenly disappear that's why but I don't want to let go of this. There. Okay I'll quickly change the battery and then we can apply the sticker to the sign. Okay, so my plinth is free of dust, my plaque rather, and I'm going to line up the tape there along the top line and then I know that my text is going to be central in there. As long as the top line's straight, I know that it's straight because the sides were just cut sort of freehand. And then I want to just rub it all down with my finger. I'm sure you're all familiar with applying stickers and things like this. But just because these have been cut on quite a deep cut, I need to be careful when I pull the, t the sort of backing tape up the letters don't come up so then we'll be out of position. So give that a good rub down on my thumb and then I've got Matt's little gizmo here that might be a bit big but that you can really press them down with. And I just want to peel this off really carefully and just check as I'm going along that each of the letters are sticking. I do one word at a time as well. I think that N looks a little bit skew if I've probably just knocked it out at some point. This is one of the jobs that I thought would be one of the easier, quicker jobs. And it's always the way, isn't it? When you think that, <laughs> they always turn out to be the most tricky. I think this is going to be just a really sort of slow process. <laughs> Okay, so I got there in the end. <laughs> that was a bit of a task. And then when I thought I'd finished, this only said soft furnishing. And I was looking everywhere for the S and then realised that it was stuck to the back of my thumb. <laughs> but luckily I found it. So that's that done. And if we go over and actually have a look at it on the shop. Let's prop it there for now. I don't think that actually looks too bad with the writing of the sign. I think they actually look quite nice together. I think that's going to look really good when it's in place. But I don't want to put it in place yet because I want to age these bricks up as we did, if you remember, for the um, bricks on the chimney there. And to do that I used watercolour paint. So I'm going to go and get the watercolour paints out. And I'm going to do the same thing to the shop front and the sides. Just because those bricks look so bright and new. And we want it to look like an old shop that's been standing there for, for a while. So I don't want to go too mad on it. It's just going to be a really light covering. So as I did for the roof tiles and the chimney breast, I've mixed up a really sort of mucky colour of black, grey and dark green 
just to give me that really sort of gucky colour. And I added quite a bit of water, so I've got a nice bit here to be getting on with. And I'm going to apply it again using sponge. And I've just torn up some upholstery sponge that I've got. This is a nice thick bit, 25 millimetres thick. And it's nicely textured as well when you rip it apart, so that adds to the sort of ageing process. So I've got the shop front on the desk again here and I'm going to do it with the shop front standing up and I'm just looking is that a bit too bright I might have to pull that blind down a bit it's cold out there today but there's lovely sunshine coming through but it is quite bright when it's shining right in your face so I hope I hope that's not too bright but let's I'm just going to start up here really sort of gently dab it on And again, I'm not going to worry too much about getting right in around the gaps, around the windows. It really is just to take away that brightness of the bricks. And this is one of those things you can do as much or as little as you want, or you can completely leave yours looking fresh and new. It's entirely up to you. But I do sort of favour you know, things that look a little bit worn. That door's rattling around, sorry if that's a bit of an annoying noise. So you can go a little bit heavier in some areas and lighter in others. I've pulled the blind down because it is a little bit too bright even to work in. But already, just with those few little dabs, and I, I really don't know if you can pick that up on camera, if you look sort of around this area that I've done, I think you can tell it's just darkened it up a little bit. And then I've gone a little bit heavier in areas. And I really like that sort of random effect. So I'll continue with the front of the shop and then I'll actually bring the whole thing over onto my work surface and do those sides. So that's the front now done. And just to give you an idea of time, that probably took me about 20 minutes. And I mixed a second little um, mixing palette of paint. So that's a really quick and easy little process. And I think the camera's sort of lighting it up a bit too much. So you can't really see, um, you know, where I've done it slightly heavier. Well, maybe you can but I've done it slightly heavier in areas and sort of places like around the door where people might sort of touch or whatever as they're going in and things like that to so have a think about that and then I did it a little bit heavier around where our sign will go up the top there and things like that so really pleased with that I'm going to put that to one side now to dry which again hardly takes any time at all and you want to make sure that you're not um, wetting your paper too much. Just really sort of dab it on lightly. And if you want to do an extra coat, let it sort of dry in between rather than just keep going at it as you will just wet the paper. And it might be in danger of sort of tearing it. So do be careful. But it is a really simple and easy process. I really like that. It's just taken away from that brightness of the brick. So I'll go and put this somewhere safe and then I'll bring the actual shop over onto the work surface. Yeah, I forgot to say, actually, when you're sort of dabbing around and you get it onto your paintwork, don't worry, because that just wipes off really easily. I, mean, I can even do it there with my finger like that. So when you're going around your windows and doors, don't worry if your sponge is sort of overlapping because it will just wipe off. And once this is all completely dry, I'll just go around with a cloth and give those a little a little buff up. So I've now done the sides as well. You can see a little bit more on there that I've applied quite a bit more. And then when I sort of put the advertising sign over the top, which again I'll sort of be dabbing in with paint, but I'll probably use emulsion paint for that. I think that will give a nice background to it. Also did the sides of the roof and along that front panel. So I'm going to leave this to dry now as well. 
and I've also done another coat of paint on all of the internal window and door surrounds. They did look a little bit patchy still this morning so I quickly applied another coat of paint and they'll soon be dry so I can actually glue those into place. Okay so the paint on the shop front is now completely dry so I'm going to attach the sign and I'm actually going to use the bricks to work out where I want to place it. So I'm going to go two and a half bricks over from each window. So on one side I've got the two and a half and on the other I've got sort of two and two quarters if you know what I mean because of the way they're positioned. And then I'm just going to follow that line of grout along there. I'm just looking from the front, make sure that looks straight. I think part of my frame at the bottom is actually a little bit lower. So I want to position it so that, that at least the writing looks completely straight across the bricks. And it, when we're talking sort of less than half a millimetre, so it's not going to be too noticeable. And you can see how that's still trying to lift where it had warped. So let me just make sure I've got that right before I really press down on it. And of course you can bring in your rule as well, rather than just going by eye, I always sort of have a measure just to make sure. That's just under 43, 42 and a half. So I'm just gonna go down a tiny bit on that side. That was a bit much. I think I can hear Woody barking out there. Yeah, just under on both sides. So I'm going to press that down. And what Matt actually suggested for this lettering is to do a clear coat of varnish over the top, which I will do just to really secure these letters. But at the moment, I've only got um, solvent based varnish. I've only got that humble varnish. So I need to order some water based varnish. If you used a sort of solvent one on here or, you know, a spirit based one, then it, it could sort of melt the vinyl. Okay, let me just grab a clean cocktail stick. There's just a little bit of glue coming out at the top there that I want to get rid of. So I'm just sort of going to hold on to this for a couple of minutes just to really sort of press it down just because obviously I don't want to use masking tape or anything like that to secure it with. So the shop is now all dried and back together and I really love how that looks. I think that um, sort of advertising board up there or sign really does make or add a nice little detail. So I'm now going to um, glue the internal window frames and door frames into place. So I fitted the first couple of window surrounds and they really do neaten it up. If I show you the one I haven't done there. <laughs> And when I'm fitting them, it, it's again quite difficult when you have to prop the door up. So you need to be really careful that you don't tip it over and you need to sort of glue and press from both sides. But I like to work quite quickly so that then as you're sort of going round, don't let the glue dry. And then when you fit the next bit, you can manoeuvre the first bit if you need to, if you see what I mean, and really sort of squeeze the mitre joints together and things like that. And I've noticed as well with some of them... Um, so I can get in the right angle. A little bit of the lining paper is still showing from behind the frame. So once everything's dry, I can go around with this really small paintbrush and just touch all that in. And also make sure, because some of the frames just overlap the window opening slightly. So I want to make sure that when you're looking in from the front, you can't actually see any of the natural wood. So I'll go around and do all of that. But it's quite difficult having the camera on and um, doing this at the same time just because I can't get that, the camera up high enough. So I'll fit them and then show you the results. But I'm basically just working um, left, top, bottom, right 
working quite quickly so the glue's still tacky and then pushing it all into um, the frame so that you haven't got too much gap in or anything. I'm really pleased with how that's looking, that's really going to tidy this inside of the door up. And something else I've noticed as well while I'm doing this is where I've been handling this door with mucky fingers, I've got some sort of mucky marks onto the paint. I mean, just You can exactly see where I've been holding it as I've lifted it. So also afterwards I'll need to go around and just touch that in with the grey paint. But that might be a, a job worth leaving sort of till nearly till we're nearly done. Because I'm going to be moving this door around quite a bit as we sort of work on the inside and everything. But yeah, pleased with how that's looking. So I'll be back in a, in a bit. So that's all of the doors and windows now framed. And I'm really pleased with what a difference that's made and how much it's tidied it up. So around especially around the doors and the larger windows I've got quite a bit of um, touching up to do you can see especially down the side of this door here that white line is the paper underneath and the same around these larger windows so what I'll do is once these frames have completely dried into place I can go around with a small paintbrush and just touch all that in So the biggest challenge with this was actually having something to hold on to to press um, the surrounds into place. So where you sort of can't get your fingers out of the window to go around, it's quite difficult. So I had to keep opening doors and making sure that my fingers were sort of grasping both sides. And the other thing as well is when you're putting your surround around the door, do sort of open and close your doors just to make sure that they do still open and close and that your surround isn't overhanging at all. That's another little thing to check before you sort of start pressing down and let the glue dry. But yeah, really pleased with that. So what I want to have a look at next is the stained glass window for above the shop door. So to create the stained glass effect I'm going to be using these glass paints and I've had a go with them and they do work really nicely on acetate. And this is a set of 12 and I just ordered this from Amazon. And there you've got the nice little tubes inside and there's a really nice range of colours there. So I've had a little practice with each of the colours onto this piece of acetate. <laughs> actually let me find let me just find a piece of backing paper so that you can actually see what I'm showing you. So there's my little practice piece of acetate showing you there the range of colours and they're really nice subtle colours. And there's also a black and a white in the pack as well. And the picture that I'm actually going to work from is this. And again, I found this on Google Images and it was quite long and narrow. So I got the height to the correct height, which is 42 millimetres. And then in Photoshop, I sort of cut down the sides. So it, it didn't have really anything else in the picture. It just sort of continued along on each side. So I've just sort of cut a little bit off of each side to make it the right width. So what I want to do is, first of all, etch the black lines onto the acetate or just draw the black lines on. And for that, I'm going to be using a Sharpie marker. And this is a permanent marker and I also had a little practice with that on a piece of acetate, which is here. <laughs> Ignore my little boat there, that was another little practice piece. So I just sort of put the picture underneath the acetate and then drew around. And after a few seconds, after about 30 seconds, that has dried onto the acetate, so you don't have to worry about it blurring. So I'm going to start by doing that, and then once that's completely dry. I want to then turn it over and actually colour it in using the glass paint. 
And the Sharpie that I'm using came in a pack of two. And the nib is called Ultra Fine. So I'm going to start over in that sort of top left hand corner so I'm not um, working over the bit that I've already done. And you want to do just a faint line and because it's not a solid line we can then go over that again once we've done sort of the whole thing. And again I'm at a little bit of a funny angle with the camera just because the light is still shining in on the acetate. You need quite a steady hand for this and the more I'm thinking that the more my hand is trying to tremble a little bit. <laughs> and again you're just using your image as a guide so if you go off of a line and need to make a slight change don't worry. or if you perhaps don't want to include a particular part of the image, then you don't have to. But I just really liked this image. It really sort of caught my eye when I was searching through. Try and go around in one line if you can, but don't worry if you can't. And I've just done an extra little line around the sun there, so I'll just bring that up. actually quite therapeutic doing things like this. And do have a practice with your pen beforehand as well because even as I'm doing this the more strokes I'm doing the easier I'm finding it. And I'll probably be changing some of the colours slightly as well because I don't think I've got a sort of dark brown like that. And I've only got two blues, but I've got a really nice green in there so I could add some green into these waves.
hope you're finding this quite therapeutic as well. It's very enjoyable to do. I think that's the top bit done. Let's go along the horizon there. I'm pretty sure I've got all of it there. Just having a scan round. So I'll leave that to dry for a moment. And then in some of the places where I've sort of picked my pen up, I've got a little blob of ink so I can just go along those again and pull that out. Or sort of hide it below a slightly thicker line. I don't think I'm tuned in there. I think the camera's picking up the light shining on the acetate. So I'll just go around and tidy that up and then we can remove it from the back in. Okay, so I removed the acetate from, um, you know, the, the template, the picture, and then I've gone over all of the lines again just to make them a little bit darker. And now I'm thinking about it, I've probably made this a little bit too intricate because now I've got to go and fill in all of those shapes using paint. And I could have maybe cut out some of the little waves and things like that, maybe made the stripes on the um, lighthouse a bit bigger, just little things like that, just to make it a little bit easier to colour in. But what I'll do is I'll persevere with it and see how it goes. And if we don't like the result, then I can always just put this down as a practice piece. But I think if we can get it to look right, it's going to look really nice because it will have lots of detail in it. But yeah, that, that doesn't look too bad. I was a little bit worried about all those little sort of black blobs where I'd removed the, the tip of the pen. But going over it again has actually hidden those. Now this is dry, and I'll just show you using a little corner down there. So you can touch it and it doesn't blur. But I'm going to leave it a little bit longer and that's really just because it's now 20 past three and Matt and I are taking Woody for a walk at half past so I don't want to really get all the paints out and start it yet but it is actually dry enough to start now and then what I can do is turn that over and I'll be using the glass paint on the back of that so that we keep the nice sharp lines at the front. That does look nice from the back as well, doesn't it? And then I'll just use that um, pattern there as a guide for my colours. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I'm going to leave that now. I may come back to this this afternoon, depending on what time we get in. We're normally gone for about an hour or so. Otherwise I'll be back and this will be my first job in the morning. Mm -hmm.